got a package open, which is a basic package we worked on a long time ago. It has a, a, an extract of where I'm extracting data out of this connection here, and I'm writing data over this flat file here. Let me just kind of rename these appropriately here, call this one extract, and I'll call this one source, so we're all on the same page here. Okay, now like any project, my requirements have changed now. So I go on this data flow, we're seeing right now I'm pulling all the records out of my production product table. I'm doing some lookups here. I'm uh, also looking to see if I can't find a record. I'll change the null. And then lastly, at the very end, I'm writing data to a flat file. Oh, uh, Melissa, can you see my screen? Can this look a... Yep, I sure can. Can anybody else see my screen? Yep. Okay. Um, can somebody from the audience just confirm? What, can one person... Well, can one person confirm they see my screen also? Has people saying they don't see it? Oh, okay, so people, people are saying they see it. Thank you very much. So it, it might be uh, for the whole, oh, wow. All right, so most of you don't mind deleting this. Yep, <laughs> um, I will. Thank you. So it looks like uh, uh, it might be an issue on your side, uh, Robert, and, and uh, one more as well. Uh, if you don't, you maybe want to sign off and go to meeting and sign back in again, and you probably see it on the, on the side there. Uh, it, it may be minimized as well. So, all right, thanks, guys. All right, so most people are saying, yeah, everybody's saying they can see it. All right, good deal. Okay, so this basic package is basically writing data from a, a database into a table so we can, so we can ultimately get, uh, uh, produce an extract for a catalog company. Now our requirements have changed though. This, this flat file that I'm creating right now, I want to put some, some, some uh, things around that. So for example, I only want to see products that entered my shelf during certain times. So let me open up my fancy requirements doc here in Notepad and change our requirements here. So let's find products uh, that's, that enter the shelf, enter the shelf uh, between certain dates. All right, we're going to pass those dates in. I also want to, uh, as well, I want to fire off an alert if less than, let's say, 500 rows transform. So if less than 500 rows transform, then alert me. Okay, and my last requirement is, 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 is going to be that we, we ultimately, let's see here, let's, let's find one more goodie here. Uh, let's, let's also uh, timestamp the file. So this is a really common request where ultimately the, the extract that's going, that this point is pre-produced, I want to put today's date on that. So these are really common requests. The middle one here is, is a common one that Ultimately, I'm expecting about 500 rows to be produced. And if, if a million rows get produced all of a sudden, or zero rows get produced all of a sudden, well, that, it's outside the normal. So I want to go ahead and, and, and produce some kind of alerting if that does happen. So those are my first requirements. And my last one here is going to be uh, put the server name, ex externalize the, the configuration of the server. And I'll come back to that in a second here. All right, we already have our first question from David here. If, a, if I have a variable that's being passed into a child package and I modify that variable in the child package, how can I pass? Okay, uh, oh, you're going to see that, David, in a moment here. We'll, we'll show you how to get just that exact same thing. So just bear with me here. We'll see configurations in a moment. All right, so great question, though, David. So let's start with our first requirement. Our first requirement was to only find products that enter the shelf on a certain date. So, if I go over to my control flow, the first step, I want to see the variables that are in my control flow. So, I'm going to right-click in the white area and select variables. You'll notice my, my variable pane opens up in the bottom. Uh, we can also make that open up on the side as well. And I want to create a number of new variables. So, let's hit the Add button. I'll just do Add four times here. And I'm going to create the first variable. I'll call it Start Date. I like to do some kind of annotation to say what type of variable this is. So I'll call this D start date, which uh, means it's some kind of date time variable. I'll make this a date time. There we go. I'll call the second one D end date. And it'll also be a date time. Maybe the next one I'll call this one I for integer row count. We'll use that one later. And the last one I'll do is maybe uh, S server name for a string in that case. That'll be a string. My default value will be localhost on this one. 
and I will change my start date to be some arbitrary date in the past. Let me make it uh, maybe 2001 here in this case, and it will end in 2011. Okay, so here are my variables. I've created them down to get going here, so I have start date, end date. Now notice that the scope here is presently set to package one, which is the name of my package. However, if I were to click on this task right here and select the new button again, notice it's scoped now to the data flow task. If I unselect it and go back to my variables, it disappears. Oh, okay, let me kind of pin this up here so we can see it. If I unselect it, it disappears. Select the task again, it comes back to life again. So you may want to make sure 90% of the time that you're going to always create the variables at the package level. Very rarely are you going to create variables at lower levels. Notice that once I create this in 2005 and 2008, that I can't change the scope without a third-party tool like we have here at BI Express. But I can go ahead and remove that right now. And the BI Express piece right here is actually a free component where I can select this and I can edit the variable, I can move them, I can scan them, I can do a whole bunch of good stuff around that. Okay, so with that now done, let's now make this package dynamic. So let me go in first to my data flow task. And my first goal, my first requirement was only to look at products that entered the date, entered the shelf on certain dates. So if I double click on this OLEDB source, we'll see my command right now. It's not a great query, but you get the idea. And I want to put, I have a column in here called start, uh, uh, sell start date, S-E-L-L -L start date. So let's put a where clause on this. Let me kind of zoom in so you guys can see this, where sell start date is greater than question mark and cell start date is less than question mark. I can also do between clause there of course also. So this where clause right here, uh, Dennis you may want to sign out and sign back in again. It'll probably give you the, the video control you're looking for there. Um, these two dates right here will be passed in from those variables I, I created earlier. So how do I pass those in? Notice as soon as I do this I can't preview anymore. The preview now no longer works. That's by design. Uh, it does not support my reporting services does where it pops up a little window. So to do this, I'm going to hit the parameters button. And again, those question marks represent placeholders. So by hitting parameters, I can pass in something into those parameters. So let's make parameter zero. I'll make that my start date I created earlier. Okay, where'd it go? Start dates. Maybe user colon colon start date start date. And as you can see, the ordering of it is always kind of fun sometimes. All right, and then the parameter one is going to be the end date. So parameter zero maps over the first question mark. Parameter one maps the second question mark. 